when it comes to technology in the classroom, many people uh, have high hopes for the learning potential, but that flies in the face of some studies that show that student performance in classrooms that rely on technology for learning isn't improved, and sometimes those students perform worse when compared to those who use technology minimally in that setting. Apple is looking to change that by supporting educators at 114 schools across the U.S., providing them with iPads for all students and teachers, MacBooks, and Apple TVs. Beyond simply uh, just kind of providing access to this technology, Apple is also helping build better Wi-Fi networks in those schools and also sending someone to work with the faculty for a few weeks uh, with each instance to teach them how best to use that technology. So... Um, They've committed, I guess, $100 million to the effort, and uh, the grant expires in three years. So who knows what the schools are going to do at the end of three years, uh, but it'll be a great three years until then. Or maybe it will be a horrible three or years. Or maybe it won't be. Yeah, I guess you know. <laughs> I mean, that's, so this is such a can of worms, technology in the classroom. Uh, in Petaluma, the city's, Petaluma City Schools, they've had mm -hmm. iPads since the beginning of the year. Uh, your kids are too young, I guess, to have them. Yeah, we don't have the iPad thing going on yet. And I mean, so speaking like as part of it, but not quite affected by it yet, my my thought going into it is, wow, that seems like there would be a lot of potential for, okay, you get an iPad and yes, you do school work on it. But I mean, I know a lot of teachers complain about the iPads being used for other things. So is it more distracting in the long run? Um, I don't know. I think uh, it is distracting, but it is the, the long run is that this is the technology in all of our lives. And, right. And it's, you know, and and whereas uh, maybe when we were in school or, you know, teachers ha did not grow up with this technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, teachers now, many teachers did grow up with this technology and you're not finding the big gap. I mean, it's great that they're sending someone to help with this program. I think that's a big part of it, actually, because <clears throat> a lot of times like. I think uh, the thought was, well, we just put technology in schools and then they've got technology. Mm -hmm. But I mean, half the time, like what you're talking about, a lot of a lot of teachers, a lot of faculty maybe don't necessarily have the training to really understand what they can do with that technology. They can maybe figure, hopefully they can figure out how to power it on and, and get it you know, used in some sort of capacity in the school. But is it used effectively? Uh, do they know how to provide support when it's needed? Um, uh, I guess I was actually saying the opposite, that I, that, uh, that I think I haven't had that experience at all. No. Maybe it's because it's, we live in Northern California. I don't okay. know. But I, I have, I do think that, I mean, you know, pe many people uh, have grown up with this technology. I mean, not iPads. You're not old enough to be a teacher if you grew okay. up with an iPad. But I mean, with computers, like, you know, mm -hmm. teachers, many of them are our age. We grew up with computers. We're not, you know, we're that generation that feels comfortable with computers. And I think that uh, that's I've I've noticed that that hasn't been a problem with the teachers that my kids have and, that they're not like what is this iPad right. like they all have iPhones you know they know how mm -hmm. it works it's actually a, a, a technology they're more comfortable with than you know what was in schools before mm -hmm. I think okay but um, it might be a little bit different in this case because a lot of um, uh, what Apple is doing here is they're not targeting just like any schools mm -hmm. you know the hundred um, what is it the hundred and fourteen schools that they picked have light technology resources just in general. They're in you know, places like farming communities, uh, places, you know, rural areas or areas that, you know, lower income areas that don't necessarily have direct access to this, um, this kind of technology. Mm -hmm. And that's a big part of what it is, is, is trying to kind of close that digital divide as a result. So maybe the experience is a little bit different there, but yeah, I mean, as far as closing the digital divide goes, like I am in complete support of that. That's why like, you know, widespread programs like this are great mm -hmm. because, you know, a lot of parents have iPads at home, um, but some don't. So then when every kid has one, that's nice. And that, that is good and goes a long way towards uh, closing the digital divide, one hopes. Mm -hmm. and, now, uh, Chromebooks have actually done really well in the school environment, accounted for 51% of computer and tablet purchases in the U.S. Uh, schools in Q3 of 2015 compared to 24% for Apple. Apple's been trying time and time again in, in different ways, sometimes a little controversial, because I think there was one where there was uh, like, the, there was some sort of, uh, in happened in LA. Yeah, yeah the exactly. LA Unified School District. Yeah, it was a disaster. Uh, yeah, that was a, that was a big time disaster. It ended up in a, a federal, you know, investigation and all that kind of stuff as far as like how they're getting the technology and how it's being put to use. But Apple really wants to get a foothold uh, in schools. So we'll see how this turns out. Yeah. I mean, I think we, bo we both agree that Chromebooks are, are better for schools. Like that's what I would like to see in schools. It has a keyboard. Um, you know, it, it, it just is more, I think in terms of productivity, especially 
uh, and I'm talking about maybe like my own personal experience mm-hmm. with my kids who are older. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been very weird to go from Chrome, Chromebooks to iPads. Seems like um, you yeah. know, take away the keyboard. Take away, they were learning to type, and then it's like, oh, here's this thing, and you know, the on-screen keyboard's very different. I think they are going to get keyboards in Petaluma City Schools for the older kids, but to attach to their iPads. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I I would prefer Chromebooks in this. Situation. Have their um, has their experience with iPads been a positive kind of uh, I don't know, addition to kind of the school environment? Um, or has it you been mean more my own? Well, my own children, like we also have, you know, much better iPads at home. Like they're, <laughs> they're older, they're older, you know, yeah, I, right. they're older no, iPads. So they Fair see enough. them as this kind of thing that has this giant case on it so that they don't break it. Um, you know, they can't get any app they want. It's pretty locked down. They've obviously figured out how to get around that, but they don't because they're perfect. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't, as far mm-hmm. as I know, get around that. Uh, but yeah, they're just slow and, yeah. you know, and the, the Wi-Fi is slow. So that, that has been uh, my personal experience with mm-hmm. technology uh, in our house. Uh, yeah, I would prefer that they had Chromebooks. Sure. Cool. But then there's also the, um, you know, there's there's been an issue with uh, people complaining about uh, giving the kids access to things they shouldn't look at, like to, you know, pornography or other things that they can get access to uh, on their iPads, which with to a that... a simple search engine. I mean, right. To just, that I say it's not yeah. the iPads, it's the internet access that right. is the problem. And, you know, so, mm-hmm. but I get it.